thousands of years, people around the world have believed in the existence of Satan, an entity that is thought to be the embodiment of pure evil. But is Satan just a myth, a figment of our collective imagination? Or is he lurking, ready to tempt us and possess our souls? Well, that is what we'll try and find out. Jerusalem, Israel, the Holy Land. For thousands of years, religious pilgrims of many faiths have come to this sacred city to express their devotion to God. But just outside the walls of Jerusalem lies the Valley of Enom, an ancient place of unholy worship, where evil deeds were performed long ago in honor of God's enemy, Satan. In the book of Jeremiah, God reports through his prophet that people outside Jerusalem in a place called the Valley of Hinnom are sacrificing their sons and also their daughters. And God explicitly says, I never asked you to do this satanic ritual and expresses that he's angry that there's going to be a terrible punishment for this. Historically speaking, in the days of the Bible, not everybody was faithful to the Lord. Satanism influenced the Israelite community. And what they would do literally was they'd create a big pit of fire, and they actually would sacrifice their firstborn male through the fire. This was performed in the Valley of Hinnom which is actually the Hebrew word today for hell. I can't imagine what would cause someone to want to sacrifice their own child to anything, for, for any reason. But this demonstrates how in antiquity people believed that their crops wouldn't grow, that the rains wouldn't come if they didn't offer sacrifices up to some satanic demons, spirits, whatever. And now you have introduced this new being that's responsible for the bad things, and his name comes to be Satan. What can explain the shocking events that took place in the Valley of Enom thousands of years ago? Was it simply the result of human wickedness? Or is it possible that as the biblical accounts suggest, Satan and his demons were, and still are, real entities that have the power to influence people. Some people think of Satan as Beelzebub, or Lucifer, or the Prince of Darkness, or the Evil One, or Old Nick. And some of these names come from scripture, a lot of them come from folklore. And if you think of Satan as this ubiquitous figure who's constantly tormenting and tempting people, then it makes sense that the devil can be known by all of these different nicknames. Is there really a character of the Satan? Well, the definition of that is going to differ between the major world religions. But fear of an eternal damnation in the afterlife has always been sufficient to keep people religious and in line with the beliefs of their religious clerics who warn them that failure to comply will lead to an eternity of suffering and damnation. Or in other words, the stories from which this developed were to teach moral lessons. Throughout history, many religions have interpreted the world through the lens of having a figure of evil, Satan, who is responsible for evil in the world. According to Christian tradition, Satan was one of the most powerful and beautiful of the angels. He rebelled against God, 
A third of the angels sided with Satan, and there was a war in heaven, which Satan lost and was cast down into hell. Satan is the embodiment of evil, a fallen angel who tempts you to not follow your best values. He is a god of sorts, and he can offer something like that to us. Great knowledge, control, mastery, the stuff of transcendence. Of course, it will cost us everything. After all, this is not a straight shooter. This is not somebody who's going to tell the truth. His job is to tempt you. Satan is believed to have tried to tempt Jesus when he was in the desert with visions of earthly delights. So Satan is continually throughout the Bible someone trying to draw people from God to evil. 